Once you've installed and configured your Groove.io nodes, you may want to start doing something more interesting with your data. If you haven't already installed these nodes and configured your device, go ahead and watch our previous video that goes over that process. In this video, I'll be downloading some new nodes to create a simple UI dashboard within Node-RED that I can use to access and control my device. Now, before I dive into going ahead and using these Groove nodes, I'll first need to do some other setup. And specifically, I'll need to come up to the Manage palette and install my new nodes, since you'll notice that there's no dashboard or UI nodes here. I do have all the core nodes that come pre-installed with Node-RED, and the Groove I.O. nodes that I'll need to communicate with my Groove Rio that I'm using for this demo. And before I can come up to this Install tab and search for nodes, I will need to have a gateway to the internet. But since my Rio here is connected to my home router over Ethernet, I can go ahead and type in here Dashboard. Now, it's really important that you select the correct result for Dashboard. You want this Node Red Dashboard, not this CN Dashboard nodes. So it's Node Red Dashboards, this set of Dashboard nodes for Node Red, and you'll always get the latest version. In this case, we're using 2.27.0. So now that I'm connected to the internet and I can click Install, confirm the installation, and then I can click view log to make sure that everything comes down correctly. Now, depending on the device you're running it on, the version of Node-RED you're using, and the version of the node package you're installing, you may see some errors in here. But don't worry, as long as you get a return code of zero and see the nodes show up in your dashboard, you should be good to go. So after just a couple of seconds of waiting, we'll see that the nodes are going to start coming down here. And there we go, I've got my return code of zero, and we'll see a pop-up of all these new nodes that I can now use in Node-RED. If I close this and close out of the Manage Palette window, I can scroll down and see that they're added to the bottom of my palette over here. So now I can start setting up my dashboard page. If I come back to Groove Manage and select I.O. Channels, I'll first decide on what data I want to display and what I want to control. I'll do a short example of each, and that should be enough to get you started. For example, let's start with this fuel level. You'll see I'm at 4.2 gallons, but I'm easily able to turn this up. And there we go, I'm up all the way to 10 gallons almost, and scroll it all the way back down, and I'm down to 1.4. So I do have control over this with a potentiometer, so it'll be really easy to test. This is on channel 2, and we are on module 0. You can see that up there in the URL. So I want to bring in this, this module 0, that's the only module installed on the Rio, the, this one module device, and I want to get channel 2 for this fuel level. So. Back in node red, I'll bring in my Groove IO input node and double click it to configure it. Now, but I won't be leaving my dead band at one gallon of change. Since I only have 10 gallons, I want more readings than that. So I'm going to change it to 0.1 so I get really good resolution in node red. I'll give this node a name like read fuel level and click done. That's all I need to do for that part of the groove. Now I want to decide how to display this. I could simply pick a text field that will show the numerical value of my fuel level, but instead I'm going to create a gauge. So I'll just drag that in and double click it to configure it. We can see here that I need to configure a group. That red outline there means this is misconfigured. Since you don't have any groups by default, just select the pencil icon to add a new one. Once you create that group, you'll notice that again you have to go a level deeper and create a tab to hold that group. I'll again click the pencil icon, and we can see here this is where I get to create my tab. I'm going to simply leave this at the default name home, and the dashboard icon is just fine. But you should note that you can use different types of icon packs like Material Design, Font Awesome, and Weather icons to better describe what that page does. So I'll leave this enabled and click Add. Now you can see I do in fact have a tab selected, and I'm able to create a new group within this tab. I can also change the width, but the default width of 6 is fine since I'm not going to be adding too many gadgets. It's very simple to increase this width if you would like. You just do select this drop down and select how wide you would like it to be. So now I'll click add once again to create that group and we're ready to actually add our gadget to that group within that tab. And you can better organize your page once you create more complex UIs. Let's take a look at a finished, more advanced page so that you have a better idea of what you just created. The first thing you created you can see up in the top left is this home tab. Inside of it, you can see that first default group, and this is the group that we'll be adding this gauge gadget to, this fuel level. You can also add different groups, like this chart group example I have, that plots the change in fuel level over time. You can also have multiple gadgets within a single group. For example, the default group also has an LED control switch in it. Finally, you can further organize your data by using these extra tabs up in the top left here. 
Here you can see I've got my home tab that I just created, and I've added an extra tab number two there so that you can see what that looks like. Each of these tabs can hold multiple groups, and each of the groups can hold multiple gadgets, and they can all be rearranged freely. So now that you've seen all that, let's get back to setting up these specific gadgets. Now moving down this list, we'll see that I have this type option, and I will actually select the level option since this is a fuel level and I want to see it like a tank filling up and becoming empty again. And instead of labeling it gauge, I will label it, label it fuel level. Finally, I can name my units gallons, since that's what I'm measuring in, and my range does in fact go from 0 to 10. So I'll call this the fuel level, and click done. And you can see, once I clicked done, that red triangle disappeared, and we've got our renamed node right here, my fuel level. So now I can simply wire that in, and to confirm that it's working correctly, I'll press and hold left control on my keyboard, and left click on the screen. Now I can add in a debug node really quickly right here, and we want to see exactly what the fuel level is as it's being read in. So let's switch over to the debug pane so that we can see it come in, and select deploy. Now we've actually created a dashboard. So I'm gonna open a new tab so that I can actually view what's on that dashboard right now. So on my new tab, I'll type in rio-dev, that's my device's host name, and then I'll do slash node red, and then I'll do slash UI again with a trailing slash after that. It's very important that you have this trailing slash here or you won't be sent to the right place. So I'll go ahead and click enter and we'll see the dashboard load up here. We'll be able to see in the top left, we've got this home at the top here. That's that tab I created. And we've got this default group here that I'm using right now. We can also see my fuel level at 4.2 gallons. And if I turn that up, we'll in fact see the fuel level rise. And when I turn it all the way down, we'll see it drop down. We can see that this is sort of happening in bursts, and we'll see if we check the node red debug pane, we can see exactly what's happening here. It's getting a message every 0.1 gallons of change, and then updating the node red dashboard every time I twist the potentiometer. So there we go, we're easily able to display data directly served from the Rio using just node red. So now I want to change a value on my Groove Rio from within node dashboard. So Let's quiet up this debug node by disabling it, clear up the debug pane, and deploy again. Now we just need to figure out exactly what point we're going to be writing to. So let's go back to Groove Manage, return to the channel listing, and we'll see here on Digital Output 4, I have this blue ring LED. From within Groove Manage, I can toggle it on and off, and I can view the status of it. So we'll have this ready so that we can check to make sure everything's working. I'll go back to Node Red bring up in the Groove via write node, and again select my localhost value. I will leave it as the digital output channel state name, because you did see back here, we do have it on, in fact, a digital output listed right there under the channel type. So with digital output state correctly configured, we'll put in my module index of zero, the only module on the Rio, and we'll put in my channel index of four. Now we will be writing message.payload to it, and we'll give this a name like control LED. Now when I click done, that's this part of the groove taken care of. Now I just need to select an item that I'm going to be using to control it. Here I could use a switch or a button, and I'm going to start at the top, I'm going to pick a switch. So now when I drop that in, you'll again see we have the red triangle since we'll need to configure this, but we don't have to reconfigure our group. We can use the same default group that we put on our home tab earlier and just add this switch to that group. I'll give the label a better name like LED control. And we could in fact add a tooltip like toggle LED on and off. You can also pick a custom icon for this one as well, both for on and off, but I'm gonna leave that as default. Now I will be sending a message.payload with the values true and false here. Depending on what you're controlling, you may want to send different values. But because this Groove IO node is expecting a value coming in on message.payload, and if we check the help tab, we can see that to turn on the channel, we should send the boolean true, or the string true or on, and then to turn it off, we send the boolean value of false, or the strings false or off. So in this case, our boolean values of true and false coming on message.payload are the correct control messages that we're looking for. Again, I'll give this node a name like LED control, and click done. So now when I wire this node in, we'll have this new button added to our dashboard and it'll control the LED. So if I bring up my dashboard now, you'll see we only have the fuel level. But if I come over here back to node red and deploy this node, we can see as soon as I bring up in the dashboard again, I don't even have to refresh the page. We've added this LED control right here. 
So I can confirm that it is in fact the state is off. If I come to the dashboard and toggle it on, we'll see that we toggled the LED on, and there we go. In Groove Manage, it's reflected, and I can see the light on next to me. If I go back and turn it off, we'll see again the light has in fact turned off. So there we go, we've got our Node Red dashboard set up with an item at the top that toggles the LED on and off, and we can easily display our fuel level or as many other values as we would like. We can also see that the LED control is off while we're working within our Node Red flow, and we can also rearrange things by coming over here to the top right and selecting Dashboard. You can see this is where we have all of the devices we have listed. We have our tabs at the top here, our groups underneath that, and then each of the individual gadgets. If I were to grab one of these items and reorder them so that the fuel level is on top and LED control is on bottom and then deploy, back in the dashboard we can see that they have in fact swapped places. So it's very easy to rearrange your dashboard in a way that's intuitive and easy for you to use. Using a simple flow like this you can interface with your Groove Rio without having to set up any other UIs just within Node-RED.